Great to see all of you. It's uh, it's been a long time. We've been <laughs> been busy, and you've been busy, and there's been vacation, uh, holidays, and everything. But now I'm very glad to see all of you. I'm very excited to share a bit about the new stuff which we have been building in Gearpod, and also give you a little bit of sneak peek on on what's coming. And hopefully, also get this. Hope, I hope to get some feedback from all of you for what we should focus on going forward as well. So, I guess actually I can start by showing you a bit around in Gearpod and showing you what's new. I think I want to show you three three things. First, new front page, which some of you, at least who have been using Gearpod now in the beginning of the year, might have noticed. Uh, but we want to make it easier to find some of all the cool generators we're making. Uh, second thing I want to show you is some of the new generators we have created. Um, I think we're really being more and more intrigued about using the AI not only to save time, which is great, of course, but also to actually make new learning experiences, which are exciting for students. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll let you be the judges of the, of the new generators. And then finally, I want to show all of you how you can customize the new AI feedback function. Uh, I'm sure many of you tried tried it out, the first uh, version we made. Now we've made it much, much better. <laughs> One, we upgraded to the most powerful AI engines uh, we were able to, to find. Uh, so, you know, accuracy has gone up drastically, uh, much less hallucinations than previously, and also the option for you as an end user to actually tweak it and make it uh, just as you want. So um, feel free to shoot some questions as we go in the chat. Uh, I'll try to pay attention to it. I'm really bad at uh, uh, seeing what's going on. So if I miss it, uh, I hope someone else in the chat can answer. Uh, I want to show you around so okay so now i'm on the front page and side care pod and for those who haven't been in for some time you will see that whoa this was not a lot uh to take in but what we've been doing is basically making this whole page here to make it easier for you to find uh the new generators and be able to filter by subjects, grades, um, and also within subjects, filter on some of these categories. And I'll clear the filter. Whoop. Also, we added in a way for you to find back to recent generators and recent lessons, etc. And then on the left-hand side there, we have what we had before, my lessons, where you have your library. So don't worry, it's not gone, it's still there. Uh, and the option to see all the results from your lessons, which I will also show you a bit uh, later, where we have some new ideas. OK, so first, as you can see here, some of these are just added as of this year. Feedback from a historic figure, co-write the fairy tale, AI feedback in Spanish and English. Uh, I want to show you first this one, uh, feedback from a historic figure. So this is a mini lesson. So you can use it together with other uh, with other uh, generators in Carepod, or you can use it together with other content or lesson plans you have from before. But basically, it's an option to get feedback from an historical figure. So I will put in an historical figure. Uh, so I'll be a bit controversial just because I like this. So I'll put in a historical figure. Uh, or no, actually, I'll do just like name is like Ari, no, Leonardo da Vinci. And then I can ask a question, for example, um, or just actually do Isaac Newton and explain Newton's first law. And I'll click do magic. So now I'm basically making a lesson where 
uh, you get to ask a question to the students to explain uh, Newton's first law. And then the students will get feedback from Isaac Newton himself, almost. So here we go. Here we have him, <laughs> recognizing the apple. And a little bit about him. Isaac Newton was a brilliant scientist who discovered gravity. Ever wondered why apples fall down, not up? Newton figured it out while thinking about the falling apple. Also invited calculus and studied light, helping us understand the world better. And here, students will get the option to explain Newton's first law. So I'll just show you how that will work. So I'll just click here, preview. And I will let the students join in. So you don't need to join in now. This is just for illustration. And there I'm in, I'm at my name. Great, I'm in. So I'll go to Newton's first law. And I will try to expand that. I'm not a physicist, so uh, it's about how an object will not move until a force until affected by a force something like that submit it and now i can click give feedback and the students will get a small piece of feedback from newton well done on your effort to capture the essence of my first law of motion. To enhance your understanding, consider that an object will not only remain at rest, but also continue moving at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force. Think of it as persistence, whether it's stillness of motion. Keep up your studies and curiosity in the laws that govern our universe. Cool. And then you have another activity here where you can learn, uh, write in what you learned from the feedback. And then do you think the person's own opinion might influence the feedback you got? Let's say, for example, uh, you ask the students what you think about capitalism, and the person you got feedback from was Che Guevara, who's uh, not exactly a capitalist. He would probably tell you, yeah, have you thought about all the negative sides of capitalism? And then it's great that the students can actually reflect on uh, uh, the feedback they got. Is there some bias there from the person or from the AI as well? Yeah, <laughs> Michael, great. <laughs> Touched any, I always forget that part. I've demoed this a few times. So I should be learning it better by now. Uh, so yeah, so this is one example of how the AI feedback uh, feature works, and it's within a generator. So I want to show you a few other ones. So this one, feedback from historic figure, is obviously great for any uh, social studies uh, lessons, but you can also use it for writing. For example, you can uh, have the students get feedback from Hemingway on their writing. So you can instruct it, like write a short story, for example. Or, uh, okay. Another one, co-write a fairy tale with AI. So this one, you can choose as a generate input, you can choose a theme. So I'll choose good versus evil. About and so for this lesson, oh sorry, just mute you, Mayra, and you can and you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Some, um, so in this one, it's basically a, an experience where students get to co-write together uh, with an AI. So learning objectives, you can look through this afterwards as well, if you want. But the idea is that the students will describe themselves as a person. So I would say like, I'm Jens, uh, I like sports, I'm from Norway, <laughs> etc., and describe the setting of the fairy tale. For example, my favorite place is my cabin on the, uh, in the south coast of Norway during summer. And then the AI will write a fairy tale based on that. So this is perfect for like grade, third grade up to sixth grade, where writing a full fairy tale uh, is you know above their uh, the skill level. 
But then you get the motivation of actually reading all the fairy tales. We had the teacher posting, using it in the classroom and posting on Twitter that you've never seen the students run around for 20 minutes uh, reading. Uh, so that's another way to use the AI feedback feature. OK, I'll show you a third one. And that is AI feedback in Spanish and English. So for this one, you can ask a question, for example, uh, write a paragraph about yourself for a fourth grade class. And then when we start this one, I can join in again as a student. Seven, two, nine, six, six, nine. And here I'll have one minute to write the paragraph about myself. Uh -oh, my name is Jens. I'm from Norway. I'll add in some typos. I like sports and uh hiking okay short text so now i will click give feedback and the students will get a short feedback from the ai and now the ai is instructed to give feedback both in spanish and in english so if you have a class with different language speakers so first the english one Great start, Jens. You provided some nice basic information about yourself. To enhance your paragraph, consider adding more details about the sports you enjoy and why you like hiking. Making sure your spelling of Norway is correct and try to expand your thoughts into full paragraph with a few more sentences. And then you have the Spanish version. When comienza Jens? Yeah, I won't read it all in Spanish. <laughs> but the idea is that we can make sure that everyone in the classroom is included and get feedback. Okay, so now I've shown you three different generators uh, but what i find really powerful is that you can actually program this ai feedback feature yourself and you can either like instruct it to give feedback in whichever language you want you can instruct it to take the role of a person you can add in your own rubrics if you have specific rubrics if that's texas for the teaks or if it's uh you have a specific standard you want to follow or you can uh, adjust the tone of the voice of the AI if you want simpler language for younger students, more advanced language, etc. You can also, for example, tell it to give feedback in the response the student has been writing. So let's say you want Spanish speaking students to get feedback in Spanish and the English want to get it in English or the other way around. <laughs> if you want them to be challenged in their learning. So I want to show you quickly how you can how you can build your own. So to build out your own AI feedback feature, you can click Create Lesson. And then I'll click here on Create Your Own. And I'll choose the AI feedback activity. OK, so now I added the AI feedback activity slide. And I can think about, I guess I have to think about two things. One, what I want to ask the students or what I want to instruct them to do. And then, of course, what I want the AI, uh, how I want it to be reacting. So let's say I want to make an example where it gives feedback in uh, English and French, for example. And I want the students write a paragraph about yourself. OK. Now, to be able to program this as I want, I need to go on the west left-hand side here, and then I need to click on the Customize button. So the Customize option here is the pre it's a premium feature, which I think all of you should have a premium access. If not, send me an email afterwards, and I'll get you a code. I'm just checking the chat here if there's any questions. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
this is a question I should not answer to, but I'm not sure with these new ones, there are still needing to be done live with the entire class correctly, no asynchronous. Yes, it's still a synchronous thing, but I mean, you could ask students to write the text beforehand and then they get the feedback synchronously in class. Um, so how this one works is first, you have a few different templates. So also on the free plan, you can choose between ELA short answer, science short answer, or social studies short answer. But now I can take the ELA short answer one and I can click customize here. Okay, so now I get up a small prompting window. And it looks a bit complex at first sight. So don't worry, I'll take it, uh, uh, take it slow. First, you have the system context instruction. This is where you want to give background info to the AI. So you can think about this as this will uh, basically count, I guess, like 20% as a ballpark into the entire prompt. So for example, here you can put in your, in this case, which is the default for the ELA short answer, you are an English language arts teacher, but let's say you're based in Texas, you might want to see you're an English language arts teacher based in Texas or in Illinois or California or in uh, Bergen in Norway, <laughs> wherever you're, you're sitting. Uh, and that gives it some, some more context. So when it's in doubt, takes it that direction. So let's say uh, you would ask the AI in the prompt, like uh, uh, give the students feedback based on uh, a learning standard. If then you put in the system context instruction that the teacher is based in Illinois, it will look there first. So for this one, I'll just keep this. You're an English language arts teacher. And here is the prompt instruction. So this is basically what is prompted to the AI when you click the give feedback option in care world. So you're a teacher giving a student a very short and concise feedback on their work. Here's the question the student should answer. And then the prompt take in the slide question. And that is what's put into this box here. So the AI would read here, here is the question the students should answer. Colon, write a paragraph about yourself. And then the AI will read, here's the student's answer. And then student response is what the students are writing in. And then it will continue to read through. First, write something nice, then use this as a rubric. And then I've put in, this is a standard rubric we're using. So let's say we want to tweak this a little bit. We want to make sure that it gives feedback in English and French. Teacher giving, oh, I'll write that in here, giving feedback in English and French. Very short and feedback on their work in both English and French. Okay. And then I want to maybe adopt a bit what it's giving feedback on. So I'll just scratch this rubric here and I'll put in grammar. A student should use correct grammar and punctuation. Okay. So now I'm happy with my uh, grammar feedback in uh, English and French uh, AI feedback, or I think I'm happy, but I'm not really sure because I haven't tested it yet. So that's what I can do down here. So I can test it and then I can write, my name is Jens, I'm from Norway. I like sports. Okay, then I'll click test feedback. And I can see an example of what AI would give us a feedback. Okay, here, results, English. Great start, Jens, just a small note. Be sure to spell my and Norway correctly and expand on your interest to make a paragraph more informative. Yeah, I won't even try to reading the French, but it looks like it's the same. <laughs> so that's a good start. Um, and here you can really play around, right? You can make it go, now I made it very short and concise, right? Let's say I wanted to expand a bit more. You can go up here, your teacher giving a student, I can just scratch that and just write feedback on their work. And I can test it again and see, I will probably come much more text. It might also take a bit more time for the generator to make it. So let's see. And now it's writing a full essay. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, here you have a long, <laughs> long feedback. In English, first of all, well done for getting started. Da, 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 da. Regarding grammar and punctuation, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. First, make sure to spell my correct instead of my. Also, correct spelling for the country you're from is Norway. And then you could expand a bit more. And then an example of what you could write. Here's how you could improve your paragraph. Yeah, so much longer feedback. That might not be exactly what you want. You can also, again, instruct it to be a person. So I can, you are Leonardo da Vinci. And then just for fun, I'm just going to scratch giving a student very short and concise. Oop. And now I'm struggling with my spelling, of course, concise feedback. Let's try. I've tried this before, and when you tell it to be Leonardo da Vinci, let's see if it speaks English. <laughs> oh, yeah, you actually got it pretty quickly. I'll add it in here again to make it. So that's another of oh, here. I'm saying he's a teacher. So that's why. Leonardo da Vinci. Let's try again. Wonderful to share a bit about yourself. Okay. A few other things. You can, of course, set the character limits. So how long you want the students to be able to write. And I think I'll stop there for a moment. And 